When talking about most archaeological cultures, archaeologists can usually say that they belong to one time period or another. However, temporal designations like Early Archaic Period and Middle Archaic Period, for instance, are arbitrary designations made to split up sections of time in order to distinguish these periods by the major changes that occurred during them. However, people's lives didn't suddenly change when one period switched to another. A number of archaeological cultures lived during such transitions, and their lifestyles would have reflected some of the major developments of both time periods. In this video, I flintknap a Jakey projectile point, which dates to the transition between the early and middle archaic periods. As such, I discuss the changes that occurred in people's lives during this time, including how and where they lived, what they ate, and other cultural practices that have been revealed through the archaeological investigations in the Ozarks and the surrounding region. The Early Archaic Period is a time span which dates to calibrated 8700 to 6000 BP, while the Middle Archaic Period is dated to 6000 to 4000 BP. Sometimes the Early Archaic is dated to ending at 7000 BP, and the Middle Archaic Period starting at this same time. During the Early Archaic Period, people were mobile hunter-gatherers, who were adapting to a continent which was recovering from the last glacial maximum. Middle Archaic peoples were still mobile, but a little less so than earlier indigenous North American peoples. An important development that happened during the Middle Archaic Period were multi-regional exchange networks, which connected people to distant groups in a way that didn't happen during the Early Archaic Period. Many of the other changes that occurred during the Middle Archaic were the result of both environmental factors and trends that started during the Early Archaic Period. For example, mass nuts like hickory, acorns, and walnut were important food resources during the Early Archaic Period. During the Middle Archaic Period, the use of these and other plant foods intensified. One major change in foodways that started during the Middle Archaic was the first domesticated plant in eastern North America, the pepo squash. Changes also occurred in lithic technology. Groundstone tools are fairly rare during the Early Archaic period. During the Middle Archaic, groundstone tool forms diversified and became more commonplace in people's lives. There was also an increase in the use of bipolar reduction to make flint tools. One of the more widespread changes in flint mapping technique was the use of heat treatment becoming more commonplace. Heat treatment is the process of carefully heating flint for an extended period of time in order to make it easier to flint nap. Typically, pieces of flint or early stage biofaces were buried under a few inches of sand beneath a fire, which was left burning overnight. Once the flint is cooled, it often undergoes a change in color, becomes glossier, and is sharper when fractured. Jakey points are a form of stemmed projectile point that dates to 6300 to 6000 calibrated years before present, in the terminal early archaic and at the start of the middle archaic, depending on how the periods are divided. These points are medium to large in size and have an expanding stem with prominent shoulders. The base is concave and the stem itself is similarly concave. The concavity of these regions can vary from moderate to deep in depth, with deeply concave specimens having a swallowtail-like appearance. The basal corners range from rather pointed to rounded and indistinct. Both the stem and basal area are ground, which would have been done to dull them as to not cut lashing material when these points were hafted. The blade edges are sometimes serrated. These points were resharpened both bifacially and with beveling, although the beveling is less prominent than with earlier, early archaic beveled points, and it is infrequently observed on JK points. This point is found primarily in the Ozarks region, in mixed archaeological deposits in caves and rock shelters. They were also made by archaic peoples living in what is now northwest Arkansas, 
eastern Kansas, and Oklahoma. Almost all of the examples of jakey points recovered in the Ozarks are made from Burlington shirt, with heat treating being used in a number of instances. The jakey point that I'm flint napping is from a piece of heat treated Burlington shirt. Locally available shirt sources would have been used where these terminal early archaic and initial middle archaic people lived, far away from the sources of Burlington shirt. Jakey points would have been used as projectile tips probably hafted to at lateral darts, which has been supported by limited use aware analysis. They may have functioned as knives too, but it seems that they were mostly used as hunting implements. When the tips broke off, or they were heavily resharpened, jakey points were sometimes reworked into hafted end scrapers, used for processing animal hides. While they are a fairly common point in the Ozark region, they are a poorly understood type with few jakey contexts actually having undergone research-oriented excavation. The people who lived during the transition from the early to middle archaic used a number of other tools. These included flint tools like expedient, flake, and bipolar flake tools, retouched flake tools, and scrapers, and flint napped adzes, as well as ground stone tools like nut processing tools, grooved axes, celts, pitted anvil stones, net weights, and it lateral counterbalances. At the Casa Blanca site, which has an undisturbed jakey context, people were also using unique ground stone tools with 4 cm wide holes in them which seem to be specialized tools for de-hauling walnuts. This is an open-aired site, which seems to have served as a place for the extraction of upland resources. Besides the evidence for nut processing, a large firecracked slab of sandstone seems to indicate a cooking or roasting station here at the site. While the Casablanca site is located in an upland landscape, people during the Middle Archaic largely abandoned upland regions, living in high bottomland terraces and bluff bases for their residential sites, which are commonly located in caves and rock shelters. Upland sites would have been temporary resource extraction camps, where Middle Archaic people ventured out from their multi-season base camps and permanent habitations. During the Middle Archaic, a drying trend occurred in the climate, which caused there to be much more prairie in this region than there is today, where forests now dominate. Stream magnitude was also affected by the drying trend, which is reflected by the scarce amounts of fish and mussel remains found at sites during this time. The archaic people who made jakey points hunted a variety of animals. Larger animals would have been dispatched using a spear thrower, also known as an atlatl, tipped with jakey projectile points. In many hunter-gatherer societies, it was primarily adult men who hunted a large game. Smaller prey species were taken by all members of the community if they were physically able to, including adult men while out hunting and gathering resources, opportunistically by women out gathering, and by children as they helped their adult relatives in a number of tasks. Cave sites in the Ozarks have led to some instances of excellent faunal preservation, giving archaeologists insight into what animals these people ate. Little Freeman Cave is such an example. This site is located overlooking the Big Piney River and was situated in an open oak hickory forest with pockets of prairie during the Terminal Early Archaic and Middle Archaic. Here, people hunted a diverse range of prey animals, including white-tailed deer, eastern cottontail, other small mammals, and birds. Fish and freshwater mussels were not exploited much at this site, which seems to reflect this drying trend, which reduced stream levels during this period. Other cave sites in this region have a similar pattern. At Tick Creek Cave, 
which is located on a small tributary of the Gasconade River, just 32 kilometers northeast of Little Freeman Cave, an abundance of streams and a dissected landscape seems to have allowed for much richer game in this area. In middle archaic deposits here, deer accounted for 75% of all mammal bone. Turkey, raccoon, cottontail, and box turtle were also important food resources. The drying during the Middle Holocene caused Ozark forests to open up, creating edge habitat that is ideal for white-tailed deer. And since these habitats were optimal areas that attracted deer, Middle Archaic hunters were attracted to these areas as well as they pursued this prey animal. At the Graham Cave site, one of the most famous Archaic period sites in this region, deer were also a quite common food resource. Through the Mid Holocene, the use of both white-tailed deer and cottontail rabbit at the site increased over time. Once again, fish remains are scarce here during this time. People during the terminal Early Archaic and Middle Archaic also gathered plant foods for sustenance. In fact, in terms of daily caloric intake, plant foods were probably more important than animal-based foods. Plant remains don't preserve very well in the archaeological record. Many site conditions, like open-air early archaic sites without pit features, don't have the preservation of these materials in many instances. Burnt plant remains tend to be what lasts long enough for archaeologists to find, and even then, the tough, woody remains of nutshells tend to be the majority of what it does preserve. Thankfully, archaeologists know that starting in the early archaic, Nuts were an important food resource that gradually was used more as the archaic period went on. Black walnut, acorn, pecan, and hickory nutshell remains at early archaic sites demonstrate that these nuts were important as food resources. Hickory remains are less present in early archaic archaeological deposits than in the middle and late archaic periods. Hickory trees just weren't as common in the Midwest forests during the early Holocene as other types of nut-producing trees. Preserved remains from fleshy plant foods preserve even more rarely, but recovered specimens of their burnt seeds indicate that sumac, persimmon, and grape were forged for. During the Middle Archaic period, acorns, hickory, and other nuts continued to be important as food resources. The Middle Archaic period also has the earliest evidence for plant domestication in the eastern U.S., with the pepo squash, with the scientific name of Cucurbita pepo. The early versions of these squashes are thought to have been fairly bitter in taste, so they probably were grown for their oily seeds rather than the actual flesh of the squash. Pepo squash seeds from this time period have been found in human coprolites, which strongly supports this idea. The shells of these squashes could be used to make containers net floats, and rattle instruments. Carbonized sea remains have demonstrated that Middle Archaic peoples made use of fleshy fruits like grape, persimmon, sumac, raspberry, and or blackberry. Tubers were almost certainly important as a food resource, although these preserve extremely poorly in the archaeological record. Burnt black walnut shells have been found in a number of Jakey contexts. At the Wesley Dedert site, one site found and excavated as part of a CRM road project, such remains of burnt nut shells were found. All the debitage and tools at the site seem to be centered around these burnt nut shells, suggesting that this location was a hearth and the nut shells were used as fuel after they had been processed for the edible portion. While organic objects tend to preserve poorly the archaeological record, and the archaic period record of the Ozarks definitely has this issue, there are rare exceptions of stunning preservation. At the Arnold Research Cave in the Missouri River Bluffs of southeastern Callaway County, Missouri, a number of prehistoric shoes were found that have been incredibly preserved. Using accelerator mass spectrometer dating, which is also called AMS dating, 
These were dated from as early as 8,325 years before present to as recently as 1,070 years before present. It was excavations in the mid to late 1950s here that unveiled at least 35 prehistoric shoes of various designs. The dating of the shoes did not actually occur until 1997. Of the 35 shoes examined, 17 were too fragmentary to assess the purpose and construction. 16 are complete or partially complete shoes that were made of fibrous materials. Leather had been used as the primary construction material for two shoes. Two general categories of shoe types are present, sandals and slip-ons. Of the specimens dating to the early and middle archaic periods, the two oldest specimens date to 8,325 to 8,100 and 7,095 to 76, 75 calibrated years before present. The next youngest specimen dates to 5,575 to 5,300 BP. So none of the shoes actually date to the time that JT points were made, but I'm sure there is some continuity between the dates of 7675 to 5575 in terms of the shoe manufacturing in this region. Changes to cultures during this transition included external factors, like climate shifts and prey species abundance, to internal factors like toolkits and foraging practices. One of the more exciting changes that occurred during the Middle Archaic was the domestication of the pepo squash. This plant would become part of a suite of domesticates known as the Eastern Agricultural Complex most of which were domesticated in the later cake period and used in times after then. JT archaeological contexts demonstrate that while temporal designations are important to help archaeologists understand prehistory, humans existed during these transitions, and their cultures often reflected major aspects of both time periods. <laughs>